Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. You can also look for us on Facebook in the community groups. Just look for a daily Bible podcast. We would love for you to join us and to share with your friends. Also, Michelle, as of today, we are 62% through the year's reading. I had to look it up. 62%. Yeah, because I was like looking back and it's been a while since we said we were halfway through. So 62%, Mm -hmm. like we are moving along. That's crazy to think we're well over halfway through the year. I mean, of course we are. We're sitting here in August, but well through our reading of the word. And in some ways it's like, oh, like we're that far done. And then other ways it's like, oh, we still have that much more to go. We're (laughs) only in Ezekiel right now. Right. But, you know, I think, I mean, there's going to be some more hard prophet stuff, but then the New Testament's going to be like, what? I know it is going to be smooth sailing. It's going to be Jesus. So we're going to be happy. (laughs) Oh, 62%. That's so exciting. And thank you all for reading with us. For those of you who have been here from the beginning, for those who jumped in in the middle, like, thank you so much for, Mm -hmm. for being with us and encouraging us to just continue moving on because we have made it like almost a third Two thirds through, two, almost two which thirds, is yeah. exciting, which is very exciting. Okay, so today we are reading Jeremiah 37 11 through the rest of the chapter. And then we went to Jeremiah 38. And then we jumped over to e- Ezekiel, mm-hmm. a new book. Ezekiel a new 1. Book. I know, it's so exciting. Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel 2, and Ezekiel 3, uh, verses 1 through 15. And so back in Jeremiah, uh, Babylon has been surround, Babylon has surrounded Jerusalem and they've taken the city and the people captive, but they backed off just a little when Pharaoh's army approaches, you know, Pharaoh's army is pretty big. Mm -hmm. So they backed off just a little. And it's during this time that Jeremiah wants to claim some of his property that is located in the territory of Benjamin. So, of course, outside Jerusalem. So he takes off, but one of the soldiers thinks that he's defecting to the other side. Like, why would you want to defect to the other side, (laughs) the Babylonian side? I still don't understand that. But anyway, so he takes Jeremiah. Jeremiah is flogged and imprisoned. Jeremiah is flogged and imprisoned. And occasionally... King Zedekiah secretly sends for Jeremiah, seeking his wisdom and insight. Like, as this is all is playing out, I'm like, only God could orchestrate something like that because that's yeah. just all weird. Yeah. So, anyway, as we know with Jeremiah, the truth is always delivered. And for this, the king makes sure that he is in a better prison and receives food. And this was during a famine when others were going hungry. So Mm -hmm. Jeremiah at least has a house or has a home and is receiving food. Well, of course, the leaders are still conspiring against Jeremiah because he tells the truth and they sort of exaggerate Jeremiah's words and poor Jeremiah gets thrown in a cistern. There is no water in the cistern and it's just mud on the bottom. Well, the king hears about this And sends some of his men to get Jeremiah out and places him in the palace prison. Now, remember, the king has a soft spot in his heart for Jeremiah. Well, there's one day King Zedekiah secretly sends for Jeremiah again, and he's looking for the truth. Jeremiah shares with him that if he surrenders to the Babylonians, he and his family will live and the city will not be burned down. And Zedekiah is afraid of surrender. Mm -hmm. So Jeremiah tells what God has revealed to him that if the king does not surrender, things will just get much, much worse and the city will be burnt to the ground. And the king asked that their conversation be kept in confidence. And And Jeremiah remained prisoner in the palace courtyard until Jerusalem was captured. 
and things got much, much worse. I'm just thinking poor Jeremiah's life has been so difficult. And even now, I mean, at least he has bread. <laughs> at least he has mm-hmm. food. Uh, the muddy cistern doesn't sound fun. But, you know, he's just trying to do what God asks. And he just has to be in these very hard situations. Um, but he stayed faithful. And I think that was like, he just kept telling the truth, which is amazing. So, yeah, yeah. it really is. Again, my mind and my eyes are opened to so much more because we're reading the chronological Mm -hmm. Bible and we're reading it in community. And, and because we're reading it in community, I think I'm grasping a whole lot more than I would have beforehand because otherwise I would have been like, oh yeah, whatever, Jeremiah. But now I'm like (laughs) spending time and I feel like I know him just like I know Isaiah and I know some of the other prophets. Um, but yeah, Jeremiah, God asked Jeremiah to do some strange things and he followed and he was like, yes, yes, my God, whatever you say. Well, talk about strange things. Then we go to Ezekiel. <laughs> okay, this is another so, strange thing. I know. So I'm like, what? I spent hours like trying to process Ezekiel. I like read this and read that. And I'm like trying to grasp it because it just gets like Jeremiah. God asked him to do some odd things. And Ezekiel, it like goes over the top. And mm-hmm. so before we jump into Ezekiel, let's spend a minute getting to know him. So first of all, because otherwise you're gonna, idea. Cause otherwise you're like, questions. why is this guy doing what all he's doing? Because at first, <laughs> um, I think we've all come to realize that the lives of the prophets were not easy. And at best, the people ignored them. And at worst, they tried to stop them. Remember, Jeremiah was arrested and beaten. Um, but for the most part, they were considered crazy. Like people just thought they were crazy and Ezekiel would be the most crazed of all. So Ezekiel had been a priest in Jerusalem and he was one of the elite who was deported to Babylonia with King Jehoshin before the destruction of Jerusalem. So remember Jeremiah is still there. And so Ezekiel, that first wave that went out. Uh, Ezekiel was with them. So the wealthy and the powerful were hauled away. And so these prophecies happen in Babylon. So Ezekiel, all these prophecies happen in Babylon, which is interesting because there's a lot of prophecies about Jerusalem, but it's all, all the visions, everything he's getting is happening while he's in Babylon. So the narrative Mm -hmm. begins with Ezekiel. He's a priest living amongst the other Israelite exiles in Babylon. And he receives a vision from heaven near the Chabar river. And Ezekiel sees a stormy wind surrounded by a glowing cloud in which there are four living creatures, each with four faces and four wings. Um, And these creatures move in unison with four wheels that also sparkle with barrel, which is like the blue. And it's basically like a divine chariot coming down as one commentary. And I'm like, I like that because before it's like, what are these floating creatures Mm -hmm. with wheels? Okay, divine chariot. I can get that. And so I don't know. Just like growing up, like anything that was weird or odd, you're like, oh, we can't watch this or can't like this is too crazy. And then you read Ezekiel and you're like, wow, (laughs) there's so much in there. So above the creatures. It feels like fantasy fiction. It feels like fantasy fiction. Yes. Like total fantasy fiction. It's not, but it does feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. And so above the creatures, Ezekiel sees a platform resembling crystal. And above this is a figure with the appearance of a man. And it says in 126, above the surface was something that looked like a throne made up of blue lapis lesley, lesley. And on this throne, high above was a figure whose appearance resembled a man. What's cool here is this description is similar to what Moses saw when he went up with Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and the 70 elders up on the mountain. So Exodus 24, 10 says, there they saw the God of Israel under his feet. There seemed to be a surface of blue, brilliant blue lapis lesley as clear as the sky itself. So so cool that that's what Moses saw. And then, I mean, I don't even know how many hundreds of years later, this is what Ezekiel gets the kind of the same kind mm-hmm. of picture. Um, yet when, when, when Moses got a peek, Ezekiel even got a clear vision. So Moses just got a glimpse, but now there's, he gets the glimpse of God. There's the figures. The waist looks like gleaming metal filled with fire. And his waist downward looks like fire with a brilliant radiance around it. And then there's like a rainbow in the clouds. There's like a lot to see there. And Ezekiel recognizes this as the glory of God. And he falls to the ground in awe, which I think all of us would be like, 
face to the ground if we saw this. Yeah. It's a lot. The one commentator mm-hmm. said, the book of Isaiah, we have the principles of the throne of God. In Jeremiah, we see the practice of that throne. But in Ezekiel, we have the person who is on the throne. So he got to see God more than anyone else up until this point has got to actually see what God looks like. And then the figure speaks. Stand up, son of man, says the voice. I want to speak with you. Can you imagine, Michelle, what that would be like to look at this voice? Like, stand up. And to see God in his glory on the throne, to hear this voice. It's like creatures from the twilight zone. But it was, like you said, oh, it wasn't. Yeah. It was just like real stuff. So, yeah. It, so- would, it, would, it would be freaky. It would be awe-inspiring. And it would be like... What you is happening? Feel, I, I've never, I've never tried mushrooms or, or, <laughs> high or anything like that, but, but people t- have t- shared with me what it's like. And I'm, I'm almost feeling like you'd be like, so did I take something? I don't know. Yeah. Is it's there something in the air by the river? I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah. So God tells Ezekiel that he is going to be a prophet to the Israelites, a rebellious nation, even though they will not listen. And God gives Ezekiel a taste of what he will be sharing. So he gives Ezekiel a scroll and it's enrolled. And it says, I saw that both sides were covered with funeral songs, words of sorrow, and pronouncements of doom. So guess what we're going to be reading about in the book of Ezekiel? (laughs) That just gives us a hint of all that's going to be coming. So Ezekiel is then given the scroll to eat, which tastes as sweet as honey. And the scroll represents the message from God that he must convey to the Israelites. And his mission is challenging. He must speak truth to a nation that has rebelled against God and warn them of the consequences of their Mm -hmm. sin. So despite the difficulties, Ezekiel is called to be faithful in speaking God's truth. And also, I want to address these creatures. Like, they aren't hard to imagine, but they are odd when you imagine them. And, like, truthfully, we shouldn't be surprised because reading through the Bible, we've seen, like, the complexity of God. Like, just this year, like so many different aspects of God just are coming through and God's attributes are multifaceted and the glimpses of the eternal realm show us that like God, we thought he was being creative on earth, like, which is like, you see all these amazing creatures. I'm doing writing a science book with my friend who's a marine biologist and we're writing about these crazy deep sea creatures. And I'm like, God came up with some weird ocean animals. And then you're like, Heaven is even more so when you see these creatures with these four heads and these wings and these hands Mm -hmm. under it's like heaven's not going to be a fixed up version of earth. I don't think like I would always think like it's just a fancy version like, you know, marble and mansions and gold and whatever. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be more complex than we can even imagine. Like if this is what the chariot looks like, I think we're going to be blown away when we see what God has come up with heaven. So it's going to be crazy. but. Chapter three ends with God picking up Ezekiel and transporting him to a whole new place. So he's like, come Mm. here, come with me. So Ezekiel, it says in 316, then I came to the colony of Judean exiles in Tel Abib beside the Kabar River. I was overwhelmed and sat among them for seven days. So like uh, he like physically got moved. It's like, you know, Star Trek, the beam me up Scotty, whatever. Like he got beamed somewhere. And I think this is like the understatement of the whole year. I was overwhelmed and <laughs> sat with him for seven days. Yeah, I can see how you can be overwhelmed getting this vision and then being transported someplace. It's a little bit overwhelming, um, but these chapters are actually the most normal of what we'll be reading in the, in the week to come. Ezekiel has a lot and it was like, okay, this is interesting and interesting i don't even know what to say there is a lot in it well it just seems like god keeps building on things Uh you know we have so many prophets who are at work right now and so many who have come and gone over the last couple of generations for the israelites but it seems like god keeps upping the ante every every little bit and this one is like god going hello, this is your last chance. It's like, yeah, some of you are already gone in exile. This is your last chance. And so I am going to wow Ezekiel so that he can tell you exactly what it is. And you're going to think I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's basically it. And that's what a lot of people did. They thought yeah. he was crazy. And it's really like 
God was trying to get their attention. Like he he sent Isaiah and Jeremiah. He sent all these other prophets and they haven't gotten the people's attention. It's like, how can you ignore this? All the things that he asked Ezekiel to do, how can you ignore it? Like they, they couldn't ignore it, but they pretty much just thought he was crazy. And I could see why, but God was like, people, I want to reach you. Mm-hmm. I want you to turn back to me. And no, they still didn't. Yep, they didn't. Okay, well, we have a word of the day that pretty much sums up the Israelites. And that's <laughs> coming up right after this break, after we hear from our sponsor. Stay tuned. Okay, so the word of the day is rebel. Rebel one who revolts from the government to which he owes allegiance, either by openly renouncing the authority of the government or by taking arms and openly opposing it. A rebel differs from an enemy as the latter one who does not owe allegiance to the government, which he attacks. Mm -hmm. Um, So think of it. He is one who willfully violates the law, one who disobeys the king's proclamation, a villain who disobeys his Lord. Mm -hmm. Think about it in Israelite terms. Like they have violated the law. They have disobeyed God as their King and they have willfully disobeyed their Lord. Yeah. And we have had rebellion as the word of the day back in January when the Israel with the Israelites. And, and back then it almost seemed like they were this group mentality, this pack mentality. They were rebelling from God. But in Ezekiel, we see the spirit calling Ezekiel to do his job because of the rebellious nature of the children of God. In Ezekiel 2, it says, son of man, he said, I am sending you to a nation a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been rebelling against me to this very day. They are a stubborn and hard hearted people. And so we're still seeing this pack mentality or this group think, but, you know, kind of like going along with the crowd, this, it, and, but we're also seeing it so much worse, like coming up through the individuals, it feels like through mm-hmm. the false prophets, through the leaders. I mean, they're all going their own way. They're all doing their own thing. They're worshiping idols and they're worshiping other gods. And we've heard God's claims against his people throughout all of the prophets. And they are not pretty. I mean, God's people continue to rebel and unfortunately will continue to rebel. And mm-hmm. it's not a pretty picture. It's it's actually so sad because God keeps saying, hey, I'm sending man after man after man trying to get your attention. And yet they continue to be a rebellious people. Yeah. And what's amazing. Just is like you God, and me. I mean, I know I, it's so I, true. I'm there. <laughs> it is so true. It is so true. And what's amazing is that God like kept sending prophets, even though he knew they weren't going to listen. And he even told Ezekiel in 2.7, you must give them my messages whether they listen or not. But they mm-hmm. won't listen for they are completely rebellious. <laughs> it's like uh, that that must be so hard that he knew he's he has to live this life and give all these messages. So even though they are rebels, God called Ezekiel to be a prophet and speak to them. And so this applies to us too. Even when we were called to reach the rebellious people, we should continue to faithfully share God's word. Like there can be people where God says, Hey, go tell them about me. And we're like, well, they won't listen. Well, that, mm-hmm. that part really doesn't matter. Um, and God made Ezekiel hard headed and gave him a strong will to keep going. Like it, Ezekiel had to have a strong will when people just didn't listen and mocked him. Um, it says, I have made your forehead as hard as the hardest rock. So don't be afraid of them or fear their angry looks, even though they are rebels. And so I think that was so funny. Like he made Ezekiel to have a strong will and a hard head to keep going because like, why would you keep going? Like I would have given up, but God made him really, really strong willed. And when I was getting married to John, before we got married, John's mom told me what a strong will John had when he was little. <laughs> um, she said like when he set his mind to do something, he was going to do it for the good or the bad. And and thankfully my husband's steered towards the good, but he's like, <laughs> when he knows his principles and he's going to, he's nothing's going to sway him. He was in the Marine Corps. He didn't drink. He didn't do all the things, all the other people. Cause he, he, his mind was set. 
Um, and when our daughter Leslie was showing the same very strong-willed straight traits, Darlene said, with a strong-willed child, that when you're little, if you get them pointed in the right way, they will not stray from it. And I found this to be mm-hmm. true. She's very strong-willed, but also sticking to the principles. Um, she's in a country now where less than 1% of people are Christians, and she's there sharing about God. And like she's surrounded by an ungodly culture and nothing's swaying her. So just an encouragement for those hard-headed people, like get them sent set in the right way. But it's still hard when they're speaking these messages and the people are still mm-hmm. rebelling. Um, and then, like you're saying, Michelle, this is us too. This is so us too about our rebellion. Um, Ezekiel 3.10 said, Son of man, let my words sink deep into your own heart first. Listen to them carefully for yourself. So even though God was like, you could tell them to the people, they're not going to listen to you. He's also saying, okay, Ezekiel, look at your heart. And I think that is what we're going to be able to get out of we could easily say oh those israelites they were not paying attention they were so rebellious but then Mm -hmm. we need to look at ourselves and like oh wait god's like saying oh love your neighbor oh forgive oh do all these things we're supposed to be doing and then we're not listening always yeah trisha can you pray for us in our rebellious heart just that God would lasso it, I guess, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and guide us. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, um, it gets so easy to point out other people's Mm -hmm. faults, Lord, and I pray that you will show us um, our faults. So even in a world that is walking away from you, it's easy to say, look what they're doing. But Lord, show us the ways we can be more faithful to you. We can be more loving to you, Lord. I pray that you'll soften our hearts, and I pray that also that if there's someone that we need to share your good news with even if we feel they aren't going to listen lord i pray that we will be faithful to do so um i think the underlying thing in all of this is that you're just so faithful to keep keep reaching out to those who have turned their backs on you lord and i pray that you will help us to be faithful too in your name we pray amen Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Okay, so tomorrow we are reading Ezekiel 3, 16 through 27, Ezekiel 4, And then we march back to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 27, Jeremiah 28, and Jeremiah 51, verses 59 through 64. I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Trisha and myself without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com. It's an amazing platform that has many other Christian podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God today. That's lifeaudio.com. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.